Welcome to 221B Baker Street. A 24-year-old male patient presented with a headache, kidneys imbalance for two years, slurring of speech, continuous shaking of left hand, headache, diabetes, and no other illness. So, what is that we are looking for here? Is it a headache or giddiness important? What are the things important in this history we have presented? So first thing first, imbalance for two years. What are the things which can ca cause that? It could be ataxia caused by cerebellum, it could be visual, it could be posterior spinal column, it could be basal ganglia or substantia nigra, a number of things. Why? W what would present shaking of left hand? That would say tremors, continuous shaking of left hand. Now that could be either essential tremors or it could be something the person has acquired with years. What would that point towards? If I try to merge imbalance with shaking, I only left with basal ganglia lesions and substantia nigra. Now, had the age been more elderly, I could have thought of Parkinson disease or some other thing. The age is very, very crucial here. Just 24 years old. What would cause this? A basal ganglia lesion in 24 year old patient. Hmm. Interesting. Now let us look at the MR. What we basically have here on the flare images is dilatation of bilateral lateral ventricles which is quite quite prominent for 24 year old patient then you go down and you see bilateral basal ganglia and thalami showing hyperintensity while putamen and some part of globus pallida is showing hyperintensity are showing hypotensities sorry then you go down and then you try to find this red nuclei and substantia nigra and then surrounding midbrain is hyper intense now this is the sign which is quite familiar to us isn't it but i wouldn't tell you what it is just now because one thing i hate more <laughs> is you try to identify things just based on signs and not on deductions. So let's go further and try to make sense of it. Is there any lesion in cerebellum? Not really. So the culprit we think is basal ganglia, right? Now this hypointensity we thought on flare. Let's see, does it persist on T2? T2 weighted images as we go up. All right, yeah, that thing is hyperintense in globus pallidum. Hyperintensities are also quite lovely to see. Maybe there is a degeneration going on in the lateral aspect of putamen. Thalama is again showing hyperintensity. When you go down, there is a hyperintensity near the midbrain as well. Cool. But it doesn't add anything, does it? Then we look at the diffusion weighted images. Interesting. There is a bit of hyperintensity. Now that could be because of this this kind of this particular sequence of diffusion is not really an isotrophic. Maybe it is towards something. So maybe this uh, diffusion restriction is fake. We don't know that. Now. But at the same time, you see substantia nigra hypointense, red nucleus hypointense, and basal ganglia hypointense. Diffusion is like poor mild susceptibility weighted imaging. Now, speaking of the devil, let's put susceptibility weighted imaging here. On susceptibility weighted imaging, what we have is. Yeah, 
look at that, a blooming on the bilateral substantia nigrae, all right, and in bilateral globus pallidae. Now that basically seals the fate, isn't it? Some kind of heavy metal is being deposited in substantia nigra and in globus pallidus, both basal ganglia regions. Now do we know any kind of disease which does that? Hmm, interesting. One of the culprits we are thinking here right now is Wilson's disease. Copper gets deposited in basal ganglia, child develops motor problems with age. Is there because of cellulopalmin have some mutation defect? Hmm. Is there anything at all we can see? Now there is a panda sign which is described, which is what we saw here. The red nucleus being the eyes of the panda. Looks kind of cute, isn't it? Let me just draw it for you. Look at that. Does that look not panda to you? That does look like panda, doesn't it? Interesting. So that's our case. How we went from assessing it clinically to MRI. What was the most important thing was to identify on SWI images there is a there is a blooming noted in the bilateral globus pallidum and in substantia nigra. Now the point to be taken here this can happen with age, but this is very unusual for twenty four year old patient. That was the take home point like whenever you have so much atrophy, so much accumulation going on of heavy metals. You need to look at the other causes. And Wilson is kind of rare. So there we go. The patient will be referred for neurologist for further evaluation. And uh, I guess it should be straightforward. The serum, copper level and cerebral plasmin things should able to narrow our search down. I will let you know the feedback once I get to know what uh, the diagnosis turn out to be. But at this point, I'm pretty confident that this will be turn out to be Wilson's disease. Thank you for your time and have a nice day. I'll just uh, leave you with the clinical symptoms again just so that next time when you look at the case you look at the history first before jumping into MRI. Thank you very much. Have a nice time.